Here I am in the British countryside for this vlog. Actually going back to where my live poker career, can you call it that? Live poker experience started in a pub in the Dorset countryside where I used to play 10 pound tournaments every Wednesday and five pound tournaments every Sunday. It was really good fun. And we're going back there today to play some 1-1, 200 pound buy-in Go and see everyone that I used to see and have a really, really fun session. So it's the first hand of the session. We're all sat down with about 200 pounds in our stack playing 1-1 and I am in the two pound straddle for this one. And I look down at Jack seven of diamonds. Now it folds all the way around to the cutoff who decides to open up the action to 10 pounds and it folds to me and I decide to defend. I think this is fine just to make the cool here. I don't think we need to get fancy and raise out of position. Heading to a flop that is three, Jack three. We flopped ourselves top two pair. Uh, I'm gonna start with a check though. I don't think we necessarily want to put money in just yet. We're gonna let the pre-flop aggressor do the betting here and he decides to go for a bet of seven pounds. Now I'm happy to just call here. We could raise for some protection, but I don't think our hand is particularly strong. So I just want to call and hopefully get to showdown. The turn is the five of hearts. I'm going to check it once again. You could again make an argument for leading here, but I'm happy just to get to showdown. Once again, I think it's still possible that we could be beaten. The cutoff could have over pairs or even stronger jacks that have us beat. So I'm happy to just check and cool this one down. But this time the cutoff decides to check back, which makes me think that I may have the best hand. The river is the seven of spades, improving me to a better two pair. So now if the cutoff did for some reason check back a jack on the turn, we very likely have them beat. So I am gonna go for some value now. I decide to go for a large bet of 45 pounds. Maybe the cutoff checked an overpair back and I can get paid off, or potentially he thinks I'm just bluffing if I go for a large size. It is very polarizing. So I'm hoping we can just get paid off here. And actually the cutoff doesn't take any time at all before he makes the call. I turn over my hand and we are going to win the first hand of the session. An orbit goes by and I'm back in the straddle with 8-9 offsuit this time. There's been a couple of limps and then the cutoff opens it to £6. The button makes the call and I think usually this would probably just be a fold from me. Playing a hand like this out of position never works out too well. But I am in a home game. I'm trying to give a bit of action here, have a bit of fun. So I do decide to call this one and take it to a flop. Now both of the limpers make the call. So we're heading five ways to the flop, which is six, four, ten with two spades. So I'm going to begin with a check here. I do have a gut shot, but not much more than that. So unless we get to see a free turn, I think we will likely be folding this one on the flop. The low jack decides to put in a bet of 12 pounds. And then all the other players decide to make the call. So now it's back on me and I'm actually getting a really good price here. If I do hit that seven that gives me the nuts, unless it's a spade, then I could potentially make a lot of money here. So I think given the price that I'm guessing, I am going to make one more call here. Hopefully we hit that seven on the turn. Unfortunately, we don't. It's the queen of hearts on the turn. But now I do have a double gutter. Any seven or jack would give me a straight. I'm going to check once again, see what happens, and the low jack decides to bet once again. This time, he goes for a bet of £25. This time, it folds around to the button who makes the call. And once again, it's probably a good idea to just fold here, but I am getting a very, very good price to call. It's only £25 to win a massive pot, and if I hit the jack or the seven, I could scoop in a really big pot. So I do decide to make the call one last time, praying for some help on the river, but we do not get any help. It is the eight of diamonds. It does give me a pair, but I don't think that's gonna be enough to win this pot. I'm gonna check once again, this time the low jack checks and the button checks. So it's down to showdown. We are gonna lose this one as the button shows king queen offsuit for top pair, and that is gonna win this pot. <laughs> In the straddle once again, but I finally picked up a premium hand. I've got pocket queens, but unfortunately we don't see much action. The cutoff limps and then it folds around to me. So no raises. So I'm gonna have to put in a raise of my own up to 12 pounds. Now he makes the call, but he does make a comment here how he's only calling because it's me and he's sorry if he hits. So I don't think he's got a particularly strong hand. And on a flop like two ace jack, 
I think we have him absolutely crushed. So I'm going to go for a continuation bet of eight pounds. But now the cutoff decides to put in a raise. He raises it up to 22 pounds. Now I know this player, I play with him quite a bit and I know he can get quite aggressive. Usually this is probably just a fold. Although the opponent can have flush draws here, it's not great to have that ace over card to the queens and it is very, very difficult to cool down here across multiple streets. So usually probably just a fold. But like I said, against this particular player, I think I can cool one street. Hopefully he gives up on the turn or maybe I have to cool him down. Depends what the turn and the river are. So I do make the call and we head to the turn which is the 10 of hearts. It's a terrible card. If he was bluffing with a flush draw, that flush draw is now in. I'm going to check it over to him and he decides to go for a massive bet of £53. I'm very happy to fold this one. And he turns over Jack Deuce of Diamonds. He managed to flop two pair with a horrible hand and he managed to scoop in a decent pot. Probably should have just folded on the flop, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. Still in the blinds for this next hand, I have King Seven of Clubs in the small blind. Two limpers once again, and I am going to raise it up to nine pounds. Probably not recommended if you're playing in a more serious game, but like I said, we're just having a bit of fun here, playing a bit more loose than I usually would. One of the limpers calls, but the other folds, so we're heading heads up to a flop of eight, five, queen with one club. Not a lot to work here with, but I do have some back doors, like back door straight draws and flush draws. So I am going to apply some more pressure here. Go for another bet of eight pounds. Try and represent a strong hand. Could have gone slightly larger here considering that I am out of position, but I don't hate the bet either. The opponent thinks for a little bit and then decides to make the call. So we're heading to the turn, which is the two of clubs. It now gives me that flush draw. I have the second nut flush draw. And that is a very good excuse to keep firing into this pot. I'm going to size up this time, try and get my opponent to fold any of his middle to low pairs or straight draws that he might have called on the flop with. So I go for a bet of £24 and the opponent folds pretty quickly. Playing another hand here that's not particularly great. I've got 5-7 of diamonds in the cutoff. It falls to me and I open it up to £4. The straddle isn't on this hand, so £4 is a pretty average raise for 1-1. One, one. The button decides to call my raise and the small blind then decides to go all in. He's only got £26, so when it folds back to me, I decide to give him a spin and make the call and the button folds. The flop is Jack Nine Deuce with one diamond. It's a pretty bad flop for my hand. Hopefully we can maybe hit a diamond on the turn to give us a flush draw, but it's not looking very good for us at the moment. The turn is the three of spades, really bad now. We could just be dead or maybe a five or a seven will be good. But unfortunately, neither of those come on the river, which is the four of diamonds. I mean, the river is amazing. It gives us the absolute world. We've got flush draws and straight draws. But unfortunately, there are no more cards to come. I turn over my hand and my opponent has a six of hearts and he is going to win this one with just ace high. Back in the straddle once again with ace jack offsuit. The cutoff has raised the action up to six pounds and the small blind and the big blind have both made the call. So I decide to put in a raise, try and take down some of that dead money or potentially just take down the whole pot now. I place in a raise up to £30, but my opponents do not fold. In fact, both the cutoff and the big blind make the call. We only manage to get rid of the small blind. Off to a flop then, which comes out to King Jack with two hearts. Now we do have the ace of hearts, so we have that backdoor nut flush draw, but at the moment we only have second pair and it is very possible that one or both of my opponents have a king here. I don't want to put in a bet and then get raised because it puts me in a very difficult position while I still have a lot of equity. So when the big blind checks it over to me, I decide to check it on over to the cutoff, who decides to check as well. So we're heading to a turn which is the three of hearts. Now gives me that nut flush draw to go along with my pair. The big blind checks it over to me again. And once again, I'm happy to bet here. I think the same applies. Although we do have the nut flush draw, we only have second pair at the moment. It's less likely that my opponents have a king when they both check on the flop, but it's still possible. So I think I just want to check here, hopefully get to showdown. And if we improve, then we can go for a value bet. So I check once again. 
And once again, the cutoff checks. It makes me feel like I have the best hand. And especially so when the river comes out the five of hearts, we now have the absolute stone cold nuts. So when the big blind checks it over to me again, I am gonna go for some value. Just a small bet, the pot's over 90 pounds. I go for a bet of 50 pounds, praying that if either of the opponents have a weak heart or potentially a strong heart, such as the queen of hearts or the 10 of hearts, they will be forced to make the call here. Unfortunately, that is not the case this time. The cutoff folds and the big blind folds, but we still take down a decent pot. Not long after that, I pick up pocket aces in the small blind. There's a couple of limps and then the low jack raises it up to four pounds. I'm obviously gonna put in a raise of my own. I decide to go for 17 pounds and I get flat called by the big blind and then called by one of the limpers and the low jack. So we've got a big pot brewing here. Four players going to the flop, slightly more than I would like for having pocket aces. And the flop comes out three, queen, nine with two spades. I don't love it, but I am still going to bet. I want to try and thin out the field a bit. And I probably still have the best hand. So I go for a bet of £35. The big blind falls, but the under the gun limper decides to go all in. He has £44 in his stack, which is only nine more pounds for me to call. So when the low jack gets out of the way, I obviously snap call this one. But I am in bad shape as the under the gun player shows me queen nine offsuit for a flopped two pair. I am going to need some help here. An ace and only an ace will help me out. So hoping for that. The turn is not an ace, it is a queen improving the under the gun player to a full house. But the river is an ace. Really unfortunate for the under the gun player. I have managed to river myself a better full house and I am going to take down this pot. <laughs> Getting extremely lucky to win that one with just 4% chance to win on the river. Hopefully we can keep that luck up and take down a bit more profit this session. And for this hand, I am in the hijack with 10-9 of spades. I'm going to open the action up to £7 and then it folds all the way around to the straddle who decides to make the call. The flop is 2 jack 6 with 2 spades. It gives me a flush draw. So when the straddle checks it over to me, I am going to start bluffing. I don't think 10 high is going to be good enough to win this hand. So I need to start applying pressure now. I decide to go for a bet of £6 and the straddle decides to make the call. The turn is the eight of diamonds. It's actually a really good turn for me. It means that I now can hit any spade or queen or seven to make the nuts. Well, not the nuts, but a very, very strong hand. So I decide to keep up the pressure. I go for a bet of 17 pounds, and this time the straddle decides to fall. A bit of blind on blind action for this hand as it folds all the way around to me in the small blind and I look down at pocket threes. I decide to open it up to eight pounds and the big blind decides to defend. So we're heading to a flop of deuce, ace, 10. It's not a great flop for this hand and I don't really know what I'm doing blind on blind. I don't like to admit it, but I think probably checking here is the right decision. I actually don't decide to check. I decide to go for a bet of five pounds and the big blind decides to snap call me. That can't be good. Heading to the turn, which is the six of spades. Probably just time to try and get to showdown. I've not really got any back doors or anything, so I do have a pair and potentially that is good sometimes. Hopefully I could just get to showdown, but in the moment I decide to go for another bet. I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Just float, throwing chips around, see what happens. This time 12 pounds and he thinks for a bit, but then he decides to make the call once again. The river is the eight of diamonds and I really, really, really think I should give up here. It seems like our opponent has an ace or at least a strong hand that he's not really willing to fold. But obviously, as you probably have gathered at this point, it wouldn't be in the vlog if I didn't go for one final barrel. This time a big bet of 45 pounds into a pot of about 50. Not even sure what I'm trying to represent here. A flush that got there on the turn maybe. I have no idea, but this is what I'm doing. 45 pounds, and fortunately for me, my opponent folds very quickly. I do not think I played this very well, but I got away with it in the end. 
Aces again, this time in the big blind. Very fortunate. Had a good distribution of cards this session. Aces a couple of times. Kings that didn't make it to the vlog because everyone folded. And I've had queens as well. Good hands. Not played for that long. Very fortunate to have this. This time, the under the gun player is going to open the action up to £5. It folds its way around to the button. Who is going to put in a 3-bet up to £14? But that is not going to slow me down. I'm out of position here. Potentially, if I'm position, in position here, sometimes I could go for a trap and maybe cool. I don't like doing that very often anyway. But definitely, when I'm out of position, I'm going to put in a 4-bet. And I go massive. I go up to £50. This might be slightly too big, but I am out of position, so I want to make sure that I go for a big sizing. I don't want to bring both players along. Aces is vulnerable as any hand is if too many players make it to the flop. So I just want to get this one heads up with the button. Now the under the gun opener, he thinks about it for a very long time, but he does eventually fold and the button does make the call. So we're heading off to a flop. 676 six is the flop. It's not a great flop for pocket aces. It's not the worst one either. I don't expect the button to have too many sixes in his range, but he is more likely to have the suitor connectors that connect well with this board. So I am going to go for another bet, but I am going to proceed with caution. I decide to go for a bet of £50. The button thinks about it for a little bit and then he decides to make the call. The turn is the five of clubs. Now this is really not a great card for our range or really my hand. The button once again, like I said, can have much more five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine. They can even have some four, five sometimes suited, three, four. They can have all those hands. I shouldn't have them very often for betting out position. So I think this card is definitely better for my opponent than it is for me. And for that reason, I decide to check. The button doesn't take the bait, he decides to check back, which makes me feel like I probably still have the best hand. I'm putting him on an over pair like jacks or queens that don't want to 5-bet get it all in, but are also happy to get to showdown on a turn like this. We're heading to the river now, which is the 7 of spades. It's an interesting card, it now means there are two 7s on the board, two 6s and a 5. It shouldn't change too much unless, obviously, my opponent has a 7 but I don't think that's very likely. I don't put him on a 7 in this situation. He doesn't always have to bet a 7 on the turn, but I think often he might. And it's hard to picture him with many 7s other than like 7, 8 or 7, 6, which is very difficult for him to have in this situation. I decide to go for another value bet targeting hands like I mentioned, jacks and 10s. I go for a bet of £165 into the pot, which is about £210. Now the button goes deep, deep, deep into the tank. He's tanking for well over three minutes. He looks incredibly pained. He's got his hands in his face. He's thinking about what he's going to do. And eventually he decides to go all in. Now he has me covered, so it is for £338 total, another £173 on top of what I've already bet. And I really don't love this one, but I am getting a great price to cool. And I could definitely see some bluffs that my opponent could have, such as missed straight draws, or he could even be turning 4-5 into a bluff here. He's a very competent player who could be doing a lot of creative things here. And I think the price is just too good to fold with pocket aces. Sometimes he could even be value betting a worse hand like kings or queens. I don't know, but I don't think it's impossible either. So eventually I do decide to make the call and he tells me it's a good call. He's got jack high and I'm going to take down the biggest pot of the night. On to the final recorded hand of the session. I have ace 10 offsuit in the cutoff. It folds to me and I open the action up to seven pounds. It then folds around to the button who makes the call and the straddle makes the call as well. So we're going three ways to a flop of king, five, six with two diamonds. I've got the 10 of diamonds, but this flop's pretty good for my range. I should have all the strong kings here. So when it checks to me, I am gonna put in a bet of 10 pounds and both of the players decide to make the call. The turn is another king. I don't think this is a great card. Again, kings are better for me, but again, it makes it less likely that I have a king myself. I don't think our opponents are gonna fold any hands that they called on the flop with on the turn. 
So I decide to check it back when it checks to me. And we go to the river, which is the nine of diamonds. It brings in that diamond flush, gives me a 10 high flush. So when the big blind decides to go for a bet of 15 pounds, the straddle gets out of the way, but it's just too good a price to call. We could obviously definitely be beaten here, but I'm not folding for 15 pounds. So I toss in the cool and sure enough, we are bested. The big blind has the ace high flush and he is going to win this one. That's all I have recorded for this session. I do end up playing for about an hour after I, end, I stopped recording, but it was getting pretty late. I was getting pretty tired and quite a few players had left the table. So I decided just to play for a bit of fun for an hour or an hour and a half after I stopped recording. And I end up having a very, very good session overall. I bought in for £200 and after five hours of play, I left with £1,030 for a whopping profit of £830 and a net hourly rate of £151.56. Very fortunate here. I definitely had some good cards come my way, a bit of good luck, but I think I played decently as well. So that is all for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next vlog.